creating electrical power on your own is a pretty marvelous feeling I would say. That is why I built this hand crank generator out of a DC motor during a previous project video of mine. By utilizing this 12 volts 21 watt light bulb as a load hooked up to my energy meter and the generator, we can see that with the help of the hand crank I can create around 2 watts of power. Which is certainly enough for emergency situations, but not to power anything useful. Now of course we could cheat by using an electric drill to turn the generator's shaft faster and thus create around 15 watts of power. But then again the drill is powered by electric energy, so by using it we would basically just waste energy. Thankfully though I got a bicycle which after lifting up its back wheel can also reach a high rotational speed, but this time through muscular strength. The only question left was how can we hook up this DC generator to the wheel? And the answer is that we would have to build a holder for it and also come up with a kind of adapter for the shaft that accepts a bicycle chain. And that sounded like a lot of work. But luckily I recently got myself this three phase induction motor, which due to its size and construction does not need a motor holder. And you can also easily buy a gear wheel for its shaft, which kind of works with bike chains. So in this video let's find out how easy it is to use such an asynchronous induction motor as a generator. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Feel free to visit their website jlcpcb.com to not only find out what awesome PCB and assembly services they offer, but also to easily upload your Gerber files and thus order affordable and high quality PCBs quickly. First off, in order to test the mechanical bike setup, I slid the gear wheel onto the motor shaft and secured it in place with two zip ties. Then I positioned a new bike chain onto the existing gear system of the bike, closed the chain up with an adapter and placed it around the motor's gear wheel. And that was the moment the problems started to arrive. You see, the gear wheel of the motor is not fully compatible with a bike chain which is why at higher speeds it always fell off. Now the gear wheel does work perfectly with a bigger motorcycle chain, but then we have the problem that the bike does not work with it. So basically put, this whole bike motor idea was a mess and I decided to abort this mission. But I still wanted to find out whether we could use such an induction motor as a generator. Luckily you can also spin a shaft rather easily with your hand or a drill, which makes testing possible. So it was time to measure how much voltage the coils of the motor can output without any modifications. But as you can see on the oscilloscope, the motor outputs pretty much no voltage. To find out why, we can take apart the motor and have a look at its rotor. We can see that it comes with a scribble cage, which basically consists of conductors that are shorted to one another and are definitely not magnetic on their own, which is the main problem here. You see, when in motor operation, aka the motor's coils are being powered, the induced voltages into the conductors create a magnetic field, which repels the magnetic field of the coils and thus a rotational force is created and the motor spins. And if you're completely confused right now, then feel free to watch my video about such induction motors. The problem is now that when just the rotor is spinning, there's of course no magnetic field which could cut through the stator coils and thus create induced voltages which we could use to power stuff. So we need to add what this rotor of a BLDC motor already comes with and those are neodymium magnets. I actually modified the coil windings of this particular BLDC motor in a previous video 
so that when used as a generator, it can output a high enough voltage to power certain loads. And yes, this is also proof that our induction motor just needs some magnets. That is why I measured the dimensions of the scribble cage and thereby decided on those 30 by 10 by 5 mm neodymium magnets. The next question was how many to position on the rotor and does it matter whether the magnetic north or south pole faces outwards? To answer that question, I once again had a look at the BLDC motor and realized that the polarity of the magnets has to alternate constantly. And by doing a bit more research, it was also clear that you need an even number of magnets like 2, 4, 6, 8 and so on to achieve the best results. So my plan was to add 8 magnets to the induction motor rotor. Which means it was time to somehow remove at least 5mm of this scribble cage material. But I quickly realized that this was impossible because the material was very robust and dense and thus I was forced to remove it completely, which was tedious to accomplish with my mini power tool, but as soon as we used the angle grinder, it worked out much quicker. And with that being done, we now have space for a magnet holder on the rotor shaft, which I promptly design in Fusion 360 with 8 square holes for the magnets. For 3D printing this holder, I use protopasta filament, which is actually a bit ferromagnetic and thus it will make the magnet assembly simpler to do later on. So as soon as the 3D prints were complete, I mixed up strong two component adhesive, which I firstly used to glue the holder onto the shaft and afterwards I used it to permanently secure the magnets into their pockets while making sure to constantly alter their magnetic orientation. And just like that, we got a hopefully functional rotor for our generator, which I simply inserted back into the motor and screwed everything back in place. As a first test, let's once again have a look at the coil voltages while using a drill to spin the rotor. And to my own surprise, the result was rather disappointing with terrible looking sine waves and peak voltages of only 3.5 volts, which was basically just enough to light up an LED. At this point, I was not entirely sure whether the magnet holder construction was the main culprit or the motor windings, which I damaged a bit during the induction motor video by hooking them up incorrectly. So to be on the safe side, I got myself a second induction motor with the same mechanical dimensions, but this time with two pole pairs, and thus a reduced rotational speed, which should equal higher induced voltages into the coils in generator mode. After removing its rotor, I realized however that its scribble cage was quite a bit bigger than the one pole pair induction motor one. But nevertheless, the modified rotor did fit and basically just featured more empty space to the windings. And after closing everything up and turning the rotor, we can see that this time we're getting much nicer looking sine waves with peaks of up to 4.8 volts, which was a good start. So I continued testing by hooking up a rectifier, energy meter and light bulb to the generator coils and started turning the rotor once again. But as you can see, we're only creating a power of minor 2 milliwatts. By changing the loads to something smaller like a 0.5 watt LED, I was able to reach a maximum output power of 9 milliwatts, which is a joke compared to the price and size of this generator. So in conclusion, you can turn an induction motor into a generator. But in order to get a useful one, you either need more powerful magnets or rewind the stator coils. But let me tell you that both options are not that easy to implement. That means this induction motor does not work mechanically or electrically as my bike generator. Which also means I will have to come up with another idea for it. But that is a subject for another video. Until then, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!